Thank you for watching Sportsbook Review. This is the Pick 6 Show. The $50,000 Pick 6 contest is in full effect. Next Wednesday, November 20th, we will go back to the Pick 6 Live show, the Playoff Drive Live with Big Ragu and DJ Big Boss. And every Wednesday night through the rest of the season, you can catch us here live, 7 p.m. Eastern time. I'm excited about getting back with the chat, breaking down the NCAA football card and the NFL football card. But Ragu and Big Boss are doing big things. Big Ragu's streak, he went 5-1 and one, and then 5-1. and one. That came to an end. He had a bad week going 1-5. and five. DJ Big Boss continues to climb the ladder. DJ Big Boss is now in 85th place, up 9.91 units. 85th out of 2,400 plus. He's in 85th place. I am struggling. My third year down here with Sportsbook Review, the last two years in front of everybody, I've had nice seasons, nice plus unit seasons. That's not the case this year. Last week, it sort of came to a head with me not being able to pull the trigger. And, and this week, all six plays locked in. I feel like I'm seeing angles. I feel like I'm seeing things clearly. It's been a difficult NFL season, but there's still enough time for me to step up and get back in the black where I belong. Speaking of the black, let's take a look at last week's cash winners, LOL Bear. So it was a tough week. There was very few 6-0 winners, and only two managed to find plus lines, something I've let go of. LOL Bear, the highest scoring week, plus 7.07 units, made $600, $600 richer. Lexicon, 7.06 units, up $400. Those were the only two guys to get above the seven-unit mark. The next four were seven units even, and they needed their action points to get them into the money. 70 kilogram man, rude doggy dog, Turk stock and Tolkien, three, four, five, six. 70 kilogram man, rude doggy dog, and Tolkien got half of their prize because they are not SBR pros. And why aren't they? It pays for itself so quickly. And you earn bet points. With those bet points, you can get bonuses at sports books. You can open up accounts with sports books. And we have a store where you can buy stuff. And they only got half the money. The other half went to the players in 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th, 12th place. So they are happy that 70 kilogram man, Rude, Doggy Dog, and Tolkien are not SBR pros. Top six overall, Tanko, a four plus unit lead, 39, 20, and 1, up 26.33 units. Guivera, second, 22.25 units. Vortex, Vlad Fan, Har the Bar, and Fonzo rounding out the top six. For the SBR personalities, DJ Big Boss leading the way. 35, 24, and 1, up 9.91 units. Babano in 132nd place. He's looking good, up 7.84 units. Ragu off a tough week, up 5.53 units. Natalie Rydstrom, up 2.46 units. She's the one I'm aiming for. She is 15 units ahead of me, and I'm going to catch Natalie Rydstrom. Whale Capper, up 1.20 units. Flash, 0.33 units. Anne Americ down 0.58 units. Teddy Covers, 1390th. Down 2.51 units. Teddy Covers was down 16, 17 units. He's come all the way back. 1-6 no week helped him. Al Mack, not seeing things clearly right now. Al Mack was looking so good in this contest. Al Mack was 28, 18, and 2. He's now 28, 30, and 2. Back-to-back on six weeks. He's a streaky capper. He'll get it back. Drew Martin, 28, 32, and 0. Down 8.25 units. I'm 25, 32, and 0. Down 13.87 units. What a disgrace. Parlay Poppy, 24, 36, no down 21.06 units. Donnie Wrightside, 22, 33, no down 19.54 units. Ugly stuff from us in the back end. Then we get the SBR Forum Notables, Vortex, third place. Up 21.94 units. Vlad fan, Manny fan, fourth and eighth. C Malsby, 20th. Clemo picks in 39th. Grits and Gravy. Up 12.57 units. These are all guys that are on the SBR forum all the time. Euler, Hot Cross, Best Play Today, Gukla, Rangefinder, all looking good between 42nd and 79th. Taterhead, 96th place, up 9.38 units. And WV Gambler, in the 100th place, up 9.14 units. And we didn't have, again, very many teams that successfully completed a pick six. Returning an interception for a touchdown. In the NFL, just the Raiders and Ravens. In college football, Illinois, Western Kentucky, and Louisiana, Louisiana Tech. All right, let's get into my action. 
Let's get into my action. My two-unit play, Arizona Cardinals, plus 11.5, minus 110 at the San Francisco 49ers. Look, I'm wearing the hat. I'm the 49ers fan. Niners are beating up on offense. No Sanders, no Kittle, no Breda. Those are huge pieces. It's the number one tight end, number one wide receiver, number one running back. Gone. On defense, no Quan, no DJ Jones, no Ronnie Blair. Too many points, too many guys hurt. Two unit play, Cardinals plus 11 and a half. I got a lot of plus lines on my card. I'm back in the Bucks plus five and a half. Sure, New Orleans is going to bounce back after that travesty they showed against the Falcons, but are they going to bounce back on the road against a divisional opponent? If they win this game by three points, is that considered a bounce back? Probably. The Bucks always play him tough. Breeze doesn't have zip on the ball. He can't spin it like he used to. They're 1-2 and two with Breeze, 5-0 and oh with Teddy Bridgewater or Teddy Covers. Quarterback controversy lurking. Bruce Arians is a great coach. Watch him wave Vernon Hargraves. This Bucks team has pieces in place. They get rid of a first-round pick like Hargraves. They have pieces in place. Vea, Sue, JPP, those are nice pieces on D. Question is, which Jamie shows up? I'm on the Bucks plus five and a half. Then, here's another plus line for you. Texans, plus four and a half at the Ravens. Lamar Jackson looks so good. Yeah, he looks so good. You know who else does? Deshaun Watson. He looks so good as well. Houston coming off a bye. Sure, I don't believe in Bill O'Brien, but they can get the job done, keep this game close. Ravens destroyed the Bengals after beating the Patriots. Is this a trap game? Texans plus four and a half. Now that's juiced, minus 119. Then I took a big favorite. I, it, it pained me to press the button here. Raiders, minus 10 and a half at home against the sad sack Cincinnati Bengals. Raiders are playing good football. Kind of flying under the radar. Teams have been carving up Cincinnati. Why won't the Raiders? Finley, first start, 16 to 30, 167 yards, one touchdown, one pick. Went fine. They forced the Bengals to run, mix and rush 30 times. I think the Raiders can win by two scores. I'm on the Raiders minus 10 and a half. I'm on a couple spots that weren't support. Well, the under was. So I'm on two spots in one game, Bears Rams. I'm on the Bears plus six and a half. I'm on the under 40 and a half. Trubisky went 16 to 23 for 173 yards and three touchdowns. We watched Cousins going to New York about a month ago, play the Giants. They put up 25 points. He'd been playing so badly. He threw a couple touchdown passes, got some confidence. The next thing you know, he starts rolling. Will Trubisky start rolling after three, throwing three touchdown passes against the Lions? I don't believe in Trubisky. But the Rams did not look good off their bye. I see six and a half points is just too big of a spread. You, we see what Goff is awful under pressure. What do the Bears dial up? Pressure, pressure, pressure. Bears six plus six and a half and the under 40 and a half. Those are my six plays. To repeat, two unit play. Cardinals plus 11 and a half. Then Bucks plus five and a half. Texans plus four and a half. Raiders minus 10 and a half. Bears plus six and a half. And Bears, Rams under 40 and a half. God, the turnaround has to start here. It has to. Please start here. Well, let's bring in a ringer. Let's bring in somebody who's been crushing this contest. The highest rated SBR personality. 85th. 85th place. DJ Big Boss. 35, 24, and 1, up 9.91 units, up 141 action points. He's won, he's got 9, 3, and 1 over his last 13 bets. Please welcome to the show, representing Long Beach, California, by way of Compton, California, DJ Big Boss. What up, though, Jimmy A? I still ain't win 6-0, and oh, Jimmy, and uh, my quest is to go 6-0. and oh. And last week was 3-3. Three and three. You know, I, I was kind of devastated. You know, I caught a couple of bad ones. But I was coming off the Vegas trip, you know. I was on a short week because I was coming off the Vegas trip. But uh, I had enough time to study this week, and I'm ready to go. So let's jump into my two-unit play first. Now, you know this two-unit play this week has to be coming out the Mountain West where I do it the best. We got San Diego State and Fresno State. And, you know, I can sit here and go through the X's and the O's, the rankings, the offense, the defense. But bottom line with these two at this point in the season right here is that 
San Diego State is the better team. Fresno State started off a little slow. They knew they were going to have a down year this year because they lost a few, quite a few players on offense. And uh, everything has been so true. Here they are on San Diego State turf. We get a short line right here. I got it at minus one and a half. Jumped on the right. It's already went up. But guess what? San Diego State minus one and a half. My two unit play, I'll take a two unit shot, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, two unit play, two unit shot, man. I like that. Uh, I can't wait till you break down this next game for us, Big Boss, because I don't believe you have lost taking Colorado State as a dog all year. And here you are doing them, taking them again. They're taking them plus 10, minus 103 at home against Air Force. And, man, you have played Colorado State like a fiddle. How are you hammering this, and why are you hammering this? Oh, man, we we just getting into the middle part of the song right here with Colorado State. This is a big game for Colorado State right here. Colorado State is sitting at 3-2 and two in the conference, and um, Air Force is sitting over here at 4-1. and one. So a win right here could move them up in the conference and give them a shot at a good bowl. Now, Coach Mike Bobo over at Colorado State, he's been having an up-and-down year here, but his offense has remained solid the whole time. The offense is ranked uh, – number 23 right now college football and that's what they're rolling with and they do this on the ground and sometimes they put it in the air as well so this is a high power offense facing the air force who we've all thought well i don't know if everybody thought but i thought all year they were a little overvalued here's a part they got to show put some proof in the pudding i don't know why in the world they're giving colorado state 10 points these guys play four quarters. They're going to run the ball well. And here's a little note for you. So Bobo's dad, coach over there at Georgia, who is very familiar with the option, last year came down. They did not win against Air Force, but they did slow them down. And I did come last year taking Colorado State against Air Force. I'll be right back at it in the pick six, 50K, and I'm trying to go 6 and notice this week, Jimmy. Well, your next spot is underway right now. Northern Illinois, Toledo. You got your first touchdown from Toledo. Maybe waited a little too long. Took nine minutes. Nine minutes to get your first touchdown. It is 7-0 Toledo. You are on the over in Northern Illinois, Toledo. That's your third pick. So we're going to need some offense out of them. By the time we are done your last play, which is an NFL play, I'll give you an update on that score. Your next look is Wyoming plus six. And I look forward to you breaking this down. They're on the road at Utah State. You can't get – actually, Bet Online is offering a six. But if you want this in the contest now, you'd be getting a five and a half. So you beat the line move. You had to pay a little juice for that minus 120. Big boss, break down why you're backing Wyoming on the road at Utah State. Okay, the big deal over here at Wyoming, obviously Wyoming's a more physical, better team than Utah. Utah is five and four right now. Um Wyoming six and three. Wyoming's also six and three ATS. This is a really good defensive team. Now, the number that they give them on defense, ranked number 53, I don't think really reflects how good they are. They're holding opponents down to 17.9 points per game. The defense over here is rough. These guys are physical. And on the offensive side, they did have a little banged up on the uh, offensive tackles, but they have an offensive alignment group that are jailed and uh, believe in each other. So they should get out of this slump right here. Now, they did lose co uh, quarterback Sean Chambers, who's out since last year. But the one that replaced him, Vanderwall, he went uh, one touchdown, no interceptions. He protected the ball. This is a running team anyway. Now, Vanderwall, I think, is more of a passing threat than a running threat. So I think that they may catch Utah State off guard in respect they thinking that these guys are going to come run, 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 which they're going to do. But – they're also going to be able to pass with this guy. He's a tall guy. Uh, he he has all the quarterback stats and stuff. He's looking real good. So you watch out for uh, Vanderwall in this one. Give me Wyoming plus the points. If they wanted to make this a fair game, they should have made this a, like a pick em or minus two 
people or something like that. But I don't see other than the injuries that's going on in Wyoming, why they would put Utah State minus six and a half. I'm all over it with Wyoming. Let's go, Jimmy. I like it. Wyoming plus six. You have another big dog on your next look, Kansas. Kansas plus the points. Now, if you had a wait, you might have got a little better. It's gone up to 18 at Pinnacle, at 17 and a half at other books. You got 17 with Kansas going into Oklahoma State. 25th ranked Oklahoma State. Big boss, tell me why you're back in Kansas plus 17. This one right here, Jimmy, I kind of just shot from the hip with this one. Les Miles have gave all the major teams trouble this year, and Oklahoma State is one of the weakest major teams in the conference. I think he sees these guys with whatever magic sauce, whatever he's coaching these players to do, they believe in it. They've been doing well at it, and that's just way too many points. I understand Oklahoma State running gun type team score a lot of points, but this guy Les Miles has got this troop together to adjust on offense, adjust on defense. So I'm back in less miles on this one and what he's doing over there at Kansas. Kansas plus 17. And then we go into the NFL for your last look. And I almost made this one of my bets. And I should have taken a look at what you were on before because I almost made this one of my bets. This, what scared me about this is Drew Brees. And I want you to tell me more about this. You are on the over in New Orleans, Tampa, over 50. Now, I am on Tampa plus five and a half in this very contest, contest, and you are on the over 50. It opened up at 51 and a half. Bookmakers taking it down to 49 and a half, as is bet 365. The Bucks always play the Saints tough. And you are on the over 50. Could you break down why you're on the over? And if you don't mind, just for me, give me a lean on a side as well. Saints, Bucks, Big Boss. I pretty much take the over in this game every time these two teams meet. Now, most of the time, two teams with similar... This is the only thing that could get me right here. There's two teams with similar attributes... They meet, and you think this thing is going to go over, and it ends up going under. That's that's my only thing I have to overcome over here because these two teams, they play four quarters. They score, score, score. Their defense have holes in them. I mean, they appear at times that they – like uh, Tampa Bay appears at times like they have a solid defense. But over four quarters, they give, they bend, they break. Same thing with New Orleans. They can appear at times like they have wonderful defense and that they lock down, but – once again, you know, they always, by the fourth quarter, end up in a late game, a lot of points on the board. It just happens like that. Now, you know, Winston comes out on this one, and Winston's, you know, he's in a trade year. He's going to be traded next year, so he has to put on the show to try to build some value in himself. So if Winston touches the field, and uh, I definitely went back Tampa Bay in that one. And one of the big differences in this game is you got New Orleans playing on uh, grass, I believe, in, in – uh, in Tampa Bay, or they playing outdoor at least, and that's a big deal for Saints. When the Saints are on turf, I'll take the Saints every time. But when the Saints go some outside on grass, I'm looking at the other side. So I would be leaning Tampa Bay, but I just see a team. And, and this is another thing I noticed last week with uh, the NFL as it's progressing is that teams know exactly what they do well. Either we run good, we pass good, we do this play good, we do that play. So they've figured out how to make little points. And we have saw from all the games last week, all it takes is one team to score first, then they try to copycat that, and next thing you know, we look good for the over in the first half. I like the sounds of all of that. Also, you will like the sound of Northern Illinois Crawford, 36-yard touchdown, 7-7. That was a quick strike for NIU, and you needed it because it took nine minutes for you to get points in that game. Now 7-7 with two and a half minutes left. So that is a good spot for you. Let me ask you this before we move on to the big ragu. Drew Brees, you need him for this over. Do you believe in him moving forward? Man, we've learned in the NFL, you always believe in the GOAT. 
You got Tom Brady hanging around here, and those guys can get it done in the clutch. And I'm hoping for a game that's right on the edge of 24, 21, tie. They have to kick, come back, and get me right over the uh, total right there. But Drew Brees, you know, is a dying breed to me. I, either he's going to win a Super Bowl or he's going to retire. I don't, I don't know what's going on, but, you know, I, I back the guy mostly on turf. He's a, he's a game player, a game changer, all that good stuff. He took a little while early off in the season, so he got a little more energy than some of the other guys. He's a little more into it. So, you know, nothing wrong with back and breeze in that spot. I mean, if you had to go quarterback to quarterback against Tampa Bay, I would take a breeze side. But at the end of the day, I'm leaning hard on the over because I know these two teams definitely play four quarters. They try to score the whole game. There we have DJ Big Boss's pick six looks. Two unit play. San Diego State minus one and a half, minus one ten. Then he's on Colorado State plus ten minus one hundred three. NIU Toledo. That game is going on as we speak. Wyoming plus six. Kansas plus seventeen. And New Orleans Tampa Bay over fifty to lock it in. DJ Big Boss, I'm very excited about going live next week. Getting back with our cappers in the chat. It's going to be a lot of fun. Are you excited about going back to live next week? Absolutely, Jimmy. I, I was going to tell you guys uh, last week, it, it passed my mind that I was like, man, bring the show back live. You know, it takes a little time to record these things. We might as well be there with our low baggers in the chat, man. They make me feel good. They give me the energy I need. I need them here with us, Jimmy. No, oh, I'm with you. I'm with you. There he is, DJ Big Boss. Catch us here live next Wednesday and every Wednesday after that, 7 p.m. Eastern, live with DJ Big Boss and the Big Ragu. Thank you for coming on the show, my friend, and I can't wait to go live with you uh, next week, my man. For sure, Jimmy A. And y'all make sure, if you just watch it from the sideline, get involved on this one. It's just getting going. We're going to go a second run on this one, the 50K Pick 6 Contest. Get in there right now. Get in there right now. 1600 bucks available each and every week. You can get in right now and cash that 1600 bucks. There he is, DJ Big Boss. We go from one legend to another. DJ Big Boss over to the Big Ragu. Coming to us live from the great state of Florida. Ragu went 5-1 and one, and then 5-1 and one, and then took it in the drink hole last week with a one and five and i know he's going to come out firing here let's go to the man right now please welcome to the show the big ragu hey there's jimmy and dj my guys what's going on after two back-to-back -back five and one weeks the, the uh, gamma gods man they were kind of rude to me last week they kicked me right in the nuts with a one and five but that's okay we're on the grind we get these wins right back at it here we go Anyways, the one win that I had last week is going to be the first play in my two-unit play, a team that I use, Baylor, in, in the Oklahoma game. So this week, I'm going to flip-flop on Baylor. I'm going to, going to run with Oklahoma. Here's, here's my reasons why. Baylor, Baylor come off a, a tough triple overtime game against TCU on the road at TCU. Now they get to come home and face an Oklahoma team that's coming off a bye and is itching to get back in the uh, college football playoff. And how are they going to do that? They're going to impress. And I think this is a perfect setup for this team to come in there and show their weapons, their firepower, what they're all about against a, a team that come off an emotional game. Now, the line's ticked up from uh, to 11 points, I believe, here, from, from 10 to 11. This is an old school cap. Sharp money company one way. Team off a of rest. Team off a of big game. We're going to roll with uh, Oklahoma. Boomer Sooner gets the job done laying the 11. Next game, we're going to stay in the big. We're going we're gonna to go over to the uh, American football or AAC. Looking at Tulane Temple. Now, Temple early in the season getting the job done. Caught, caught a flat spot in the middle. Uh, they're averaging or average yielding 25 points a game, and that's including uh, they're six and three. That's including two losses with SMU giving up 45 and UCF 63. So we know those teams are rolling pretty hard. They took some losses recently, also, but in conference, it's a good look there. 
Now, Tulane, on the other hand, sharp move on the money line or on the line itself from three to six. Now, it's kind of re it's a reverse line move. There's the result, so the bets, sharper bets are coming in on Tulane, but more bets are coming in on Temple. So that'll be a contrarian play if you want to get involved that way. But I'm not looking at – I'm looking at the total. The total went from 55 to 54 and a half, or 55 and a half to 54 and a half. There's a full point move, and at the same time, Temple is yielding 25, and so isn't Tulane. Tulane's another team that's yielding 25 points a game. Now, Tulane likes to run the up-tempo offense, but they're a little dinged up in run running backs. Both running backs are hurt. They're, they're questionable for Saturday's game. I think that might affect uh, the way they run the offense, make them a little bit more one-dimensional, so to speak. Solid, solid middle of field play on defense by Temple. Got to travel to Temple. Maybe, maybe some weather involved. Maybe not. Who knows? But I like the money. I like the money moving towards the under. I'm on the under here, 54 and a half. Now we uh, go to the Big Ten. Indiana, Penn State. Now Penn State took it in the Keister last week against Minnesota. They got ambushed. Now they go back to Happy Valley. Got Indiana who's been surprisingly good on offense. They're scoring over 35 points a game here. But that same question keeps coming to, to ask in the Big Ten. Schedule, schedule, schedule. And this is definitely going to be their toughest team they, they face. I think at one time in, uh, Penn State was giving up like close to 40 points a game. I mean, 40 points total in like five games. So they, they're uh, they're got a tough defense. I think they regroup. The line's 14 and a half, 14 and a half for a reason. I think they're going to be up against an Indiana in Happy Valley. I look for Joe Franklin to get the team back on track. I'm going to lay the 14 and a half here. Now we're going to jump over to the SEC. We're talking uh, South Carolina A&M. Now, South Carolina, after that big win from Georgia, man, they've been disappointing. They've lost like three out of four games. And they've been up against it. They've caught the injury bug a little bit. they got four wide receivers that are dinged up going into College Station with two losses, one to Tennessee and one at the last loss at home against App State. So not a good look for them right here. We know Jimbo Fisher is going to have those guys ready to go. You're looking at possibly a New Year's Day type bowl, possibly, with a strong finish. I'm looking at laying the 11 with a and M. I I think uh, – and don't forget, South Carolina, they're, they're three and six. They lose this game. They're, they – or excuse me, they'll be uh, – they're four and six. They lose this game. They'll be four and seven, and then they get a bye week, and then they got to play Clemson the following week. They could be finish the season four and eight and miss a bowl, which is more likely. So South Carolina is a big trouble here. So we're going we're gonna to go with a and M minus the 11. Now we're going to talk about my my man DJ Big Boss's favorite team, Notre Dame and Navy. This is probably the first game I'm looking at capping uh, Notre Dame at home. So I don't know what his thoughts are, and I'm sure I'm going to hear about it. But both of these teams look pretty equal to me on paper as far as stats goes. But the the, the strong lean here is Notre Dame is 22 and four straight up, but they're 0 and three against the spread the last three. Now, the academy teams every year, they seem to have that one team that's getting the job done. Last year was Army. A couple years, and a couple years before that, it was Air Force. Now it's Navy's turn. Navy's uh, been playing some solid football. I think they might be up against it, though, in the secondary for Ian Book to possibly make some plays happen downfield. Seven and a half points in North Bend or South Bend. They get the job done at home. We're going with Navy or we're going Notre Dame minus the seven and a half. And last but not least, Georgia Auburn. Short number. This game sets up like an NFL style game here. You got a low 40s total with a two and a half number. This is going to be your classic battle. Georgia hasn't given up a rushing touchdown all year. We know that uh, Auburn, Knicks, had some question marks, but they played three 
knockdown, drag out games, you know, top team opponents. They got losses against Auburn or losses against Florida and LSU. I think this might be the right spot for them to get right here with the victory at home. Now, Georgia has some uh, suspect passing with Fromm at times, but uh, we know, like I said, they haven't given up a rushing touchdown all year. DeAndre Swift, he's the, he's the guy in the backfield. If they shut him down and and call, and, and, and uh, make Fromm try to throw the ball downfield, that might play right into Auburn's hands at home. So I'm going to squeak a win out here with Auburn plus the two and a half. Those, my friends, are my pick six plays for this week. Just a quick message, everybody. Still plenty of time to get in the contest. Get you to share the 50000 And guess what? Cash those tickets and see you next week. There he is, the big ragu in the house. Two you to play, Oklahoma minus 10. And he's on Tulane Temple under 54 and a half. Notre Dame minus 7 and a half. Penn State minus 14 and a half. Auburn plus three and Texas A&M minus 11 the big ragu we have our looks all of us have our six picks in remember next week Wednesday November 20th 7 p.m. we're going live playoff drive live pick six show thank you guys so much for watching remember if you are not in this contest get in right now get in right now $1,600 up for grabs each and every week Let's have a giant week. I need a giant week. This has been an embarrassment. This whole year has been an embarrassment. I can't have it. Very difficult to wake up in the morning and know I've got to shoot this show with my terrible record. I like my looks this week. I'm expecting a move in the right direction. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope it helped your own Pick 6 plays. And join us next Wednesday when we go live. Playoff Drive Live Pick 6 show. Thank you guys for watching. And on behalf of all of us at Sportsbook Review, let's have a giant week. Let's get back at it. Let's be in the black. It's where we belong. Enjoy your weekend.